Toyota has finally released pricing on the new GR Corolla and I'm super pumped to get into this because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Welcome to the boost. Now for those of you that somehow don't know what this thing is, this is essentially a 300 horsepower manual transmission only all wheel drive Corolla hatchback. Now I also believe this is a homologation special, meaning that it was built for racing, but then they kind of took that and put it onto the road as well for certain regulations, I believe. So there's definitely a whole lot to unpack about this vehicle. But today, the most important thing is the fact that they released all the pricing on three trim levels that you get to choose from. So the very first trim level is the core model. It's the base model of the vehicle and it costs $36,995. Now this comes with the same engine and horsepower as pretty much the rest of the models. You get 300 horsepower, all wheel drive, manual transmission. There are also a couple options you can put onto this as well, like a performance package that gives you limited slip differentials front and rear, as well as a cold weather option that can give you heated seats and a heated steering wheel. But at that point, you might as well opt for the next trim up, which is known as the circuit model. Now the circuit model starts at $43,995, and I think that's pretty darn good, especially when you consider the fact that the Golf R, which is pretty much the only other manual all-wheel drive hatchback in this in this segment i guess and that starts at about forty-five thousand, i believe and this is this is the middle range and uh we're still cheaper than the volkswagen so i think this thing is still a pretty good value proposition but what do you get with the circuit model you get the performance package standard so that means you have limited slip differentials front and rear you also get better brakes as well now i'm not really sure what that means if that's like bigger brakes or slotted rotors. I'm not really sure what better brakes means, but I guess we'll figure that out when the time comes. You also get heated seat standard as well as a nicer sound system too. Now there is one more trim level at the top of the ladder and I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name, but it is the Marizo, Marizo, Marizo edition. I think that's how you say that. But in any case, this thing starts at a whopping $50,995. Now for those of you that think it's a little bloated, I kind of agree with you. But there are a few really crazy things that go along with this edition. So first and foremost, they're only building 200 of these for 2023. That's right, 200. I don't know if they're gonna build more, you know, in following years or if it's just gonna be 200 for next year. I'm not really sure on that. But I do know that they're only building 200 Marizo editions in 2023. So not only do you get exclusivity with this model, but you also get a couple other pretty cool things as well. So first and foremost, you get more torque, 22 foot pounds actually. The car also weighs less, 106 pounds less, in fact, than the other trim levels. Now that's probably partially because they deleted the rear seats. Yes, Toyota decided to build a five-door Corolla with two seats. I'm not really sure why, but if you're a really hardcore fan and want to go to the track and weigh as little as possible, then there you go. This edition also gets some chassis braces that make it stiffer and it also gets some super sticky Michelin tires. And as a guy that used to work at Discount Tire for two years, I can attest to the fact that these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s are very good and expensive. Now, what do I think about this vehicle? Well, we're going to start with what I like, which is pretty much everything, and then what I don't like, which isn't very much to be completely honest. Now, I love the price. I think the price positions it really, really well because the only other competitors with this thing in terms of all-wheel drive manual transmission hatchbacks is the Golf R. And that, again, starts at like 45000 So this thing undercuts that by a whole lot. Now, if you're willing to look at some front-wheel drive options, there's the Honda Civic Type R, which I think is a little bit cheaper. Um, there's also the all-wheel drive turbo Mazda 3, but that only comes with an automatic. So in terms of, you know, all-wheel drive turbocharged uh, manual transmission hot hatches, this is by far the best option in my opinion. I also love the specs. 300 horsepower, 273, I think, pounds feet of torque. That's just, that's insane. I, oh, I really, really, really want to feel what that feels like. That, that just sounds fantastic. Now, to be honest, I'm kind of on the fence about the looks. Um, I really, really like how functional it looks. Um, and I think there's a lot of beauty that comes from that. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's a very attractive design. There's a lot of squared off edges and that front grille is just kind of a rectangle and it's kind of boring to be honest. But I really do appreciate the functional aesthetic of it overall. So I think I like more than I dislike with the looks. Now what I don't like, um, honestly there isn't a whole lot to be completely honest. Um, I mentioned the looks don't quite do it for me, but I can appreciate the functionality of it all. I am curious though of how long these turbo three cylinders are going to last. Obviously Toyota has been in the engine making game for a long time. I think they know what they're doing. 
But I think Toyota is the first manufacturer to go with the turbo three cylinder all wheel drive platform. I think they're the first one just to do it. I know Ford's been using three cylinders in their escape models, I believe for a while now. So three cylinders aren't completely new, but this is definitely kind of, this is kind of a new platform. Now they have been building the GR Yaris for a while and those seem to be doing just fine. So I don't think there's gonna be anything seriously wrong with these vehicles to be completely honest but you know we don't really know yet because we haven't seen any now which one would i buy to be completely honest i'm kind of a penny pincher i'd go for the core model and then throw on the performance package that'd get me the limited slip differentials and the better brakes so i could go and track it if i wanted to because to be honest i might buy this in a few years when there's a couple of used models and they're kind of down on price a little bit and i'd love to take it out to the racetrack or the very least autocross it so i'm gonna want those limited slip differentials and those better brakes i live in an area where it snows a lot and to be honest i would probably pass on the cold weather package simply because i believe the interior is just cloth seats and they don't get as cold in the winter and they don't get as hot in the summer. And to be honest, I'm totally fine with cloth seats as long as they're built well. So I would personally pass on the um, cold weather package myself, but who cares what I think? I wanna know what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comments below which trim level you would go for if you would go for a Corolla at all. Also, I'm kind of curious to know what you guys think about the whole turbo three cylinder thing. Would you rather there be a four cylinder? Do you think the three cylinders will last long enough for it to really be a reliable vehicle? Would you get something else like a Honda Civic type r or a golf r because to be honest those are some pretty cool cars the gr corolla might not be everyone's thing but that's pretty much the end of today's video i really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe that'd be really really cool to get this channel growing and just like that i'll see you guys in the next video